here is a, another function that we're going to introduce you to that you can use in the indicator builder. And it's called the input function. And as the name suggests, what the input function allows you to do is when you apply an indicator, it prompts the user, the us, for input. We're able to actually change certain variables. Okay, so notice in this particular example here, the first thing we've done, we've actually just break this up into two. We've actually got a semicolon there in the middle of the second line. Notice that, the semicolon there. To the right hand side of that semicolon is the actual formula that we want. But all the work prior to that is actually assigning a value to a word called days. Notice that? And the days there, using that input function, we're actually, should we apply this indicator, we're prompting the user for input. The input is for the word days. Once the user inputs that particular value, that value will be used in the bottom right hand corner within that particular formula. Now you can have quite a number of input functions within one formula. We'll actually show you how this works in Metastock. And we'll go to, uh, we'll probably delete that indicator we have there. <clears throat> and we'll go to uh, the Metastock guide indicator, which is uh, probably very close to where it is. There it is there. When we apply this indicator, before it drops on the particular chart, it says, hang on a second, I need you to sort out a few issues for me here. It's prompting the user for input because in the formula, as David will show you in the formula, it's using the input function. Okay, so when we go back to the parameters, before this indicator we applied, we need to provide an answer to that particular variable. In the, if we just go back to the PowerPoint presentation, just one thing I want to draw to your attention. In the bottom left hand corner, the beginning of the second line there, notice there are a few numbers. There is 1, 9,999 and 120. I'd just like to tell you what those numbers represent. The 1 is the minimum value that Metastock will accept for that variable, the minimum value. The 9,999 is the maximum value it will accept for that value. The 120 is the default that is sitting right there when you first use it. If we provide a response outside that range, Metastock will simply say, no, it's outside the range. It needs to be between 1 and 9,999. Just thought I'd draw your attention to those particular parameters in there. All in your notes, of course, and you, there are a number of applications where you can use this.